We can be, okay, we started recording. Okay. The April 27th, 2020 meeting of the Yarmouth Old Kings Highway Historic District Committee is about to convene. As a precautionary measure to reduce the spread of coronavirus, all town buildings are closed to the public. Therefore, this meeting will be held by remote participation. My name is Beth Vozella and I will be moderating this virtual meeting. I will now turn it over to the chair of the committee. My name is Richard Gegenwath. I'm the chairman of the Oak Kings Highway Historic District Committee of the Town of Yarmouth. I will begin by taking a roll call for a quorum. So um, we have Bob Wilkins. I'm here. And Rosemary Nichols. I'm here. Okay, so we, we need to have three for a quorum and we do. So we can proceed. And our moderator, Beth, will tell you a few things that we need to do. And um, then we'll get into the itself. We have two items on the agenda this evening. Okay, um, I'm just gonna give some instructions for participating, but we'll also be giving some direction during the meeting. So um, anyone who is in attendance, not to worry. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the Massachusetts Open Meeting Law, General Law Chapter 30A, Section 18, and the Governor's March 23rd, 2020 order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place, this meeting of the Old Kings Highway Historic District Committee is being conducted via remote participation. No in-person attendance will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access and participate in the proceedings as provided for in the order. Persons who would like to view this meeting while in progress may do so by joining this virtual meeting as an attendee or viewing the live feed on the Town of Yarmouth YouTube channel. Unfortunately, we're having trouble connecting to YouTube, so we're not live on YouTube this evening. You may also listen to the meeting by dialing into the number provided on the notice of meeting. We will also post a a recording of this meeting on the Town of Yarmouth website as soon as we're available, uh, or as soon as we're able. Please be patient as we work to overcome any technical challenges that may arise during the virtual meeting. To reduce confusion during the meeting, all audience participants will be muted by the moderator. As to participants are called upon to speak, they will be unmuted. Applicants will be asked to use the raise hand button or press star nine on their phone to identify themselves to the committee when prompted. The moderator will then unmute participants when they are called upon to speak. Application materials will be made visible by the moderator only if asked to do so. During the portions of the hearing designated for public comment, the chair will ask if anyone in the audience has any questions or comments relating to the item being heard. Anyone wishing to speak can do so by the raise hand button within the virtual meeting or by pressing star nine on their phone to indicate that you would like to comment. Please wait for the moderator to recognize you before speaking. Members of the public who wish to provide comment will be asked to identify themselves for the public record by clearly stating their first and last name as well as their affiliation to the item being heard. To ensure clear communications, we ask that you consider the following guidelines when speaking. Please do not use speakerphone or Bluetooth devices mute all background noises, and clearly state your name each and every time prior to speaking. All committee votes must be roll call votes. After a motion is made and seconded, the chair will ask for a roll call vote. All motions, decisions, and conditions will be verbally read into the record. If it appears the meeting cannot or should not proceed, then the moderator will recommend that the chair request to continue the hearing to a later date and time or until public meetings can resume normally. We thank you all in advance for your patience and cooperation. The committee chair will now proceed with the hearing. Before we start the first item, I just want to say that Jane Hildebrand has um, tuned in. So we have four members. The first item, which is for a certificate of appropriateness, is concerned with extensive uh, upgrading at 334 Route 6A, which is a one-story house 
next to the fire station on 6A. The Cape Best development is the owner and Shane Pacheco is the agent and Shane is tuned in here this evening. Thank you. There will be new windows, new roof, new shingles, doors and shutters. They'll be removing the chimney and installing a slider which goes out onto a deck at the rear of the house. So, um, we, Jane, had, we had gotten Jane all Pacheco, the information. Here he is. I'm here. Hi, Shane. Good. Hello. We had gotten a package of all these materials showing the exact windows and doors and sliders, etc., that will be incorporated into this plan, including a garage door. And everyone has had a chance to look that all over and uh, probably has been out to the site as well. So any comments? Uh, Shane, is there anything you would like to say, first of all? Uh, no, thank you for the meeting. I'm just looking forward to getting this house done because I'm sure it's an eyesore for all of you. Speaking of which, is this even visible from 6A? Uh, yeah, it's yes. visible. It's pretty yeah. rough. It's in really bad shape. I by several times. It's hard to find. <laughs> it doesn't have much frontage. It's only like 75 mm -hmm. feet. But I, I like I, I like very much the idea of rehabbing this property because it does have a, I'm sure, a historic value as well as it's right in the center of, of Yarmouth Port. There's one thing uh, I didn't see included, and that was a little turnaround so you could back out of the garage and turn around so that you don't have to back into 6A and probably the most appropriate. Um, over toward the, the front door as opposed to over to the fire station. Uh, yes, there is a little turnaround. I don't think it showed it on the plot plan that was done by the right. right. But it, uh, it doesn't go over towards the fire department, it goes over towards the other side. Right, good. Which will remain. The other thing is um, there was kind of a lack of shrubbery uh, things all around in the front. So as, as you uh, do the shaping and once that's all done, it would be good to put in a few shrubs, foundation plantings. Yes. Any other comments? I'll move to approve the application. Hold on. Do we have anyone in, in the audience that would like to ask questions or have any statements? Either raise your hand or press star nine on your phone. I see none. You can continue, Richard. Okay. So do I have a second? A second. Rosemary Nichols, second. Okay, so um, I'll ask for your vote. An A or an A? Bob Wilkins? Aye. Rosemary Nichols? Aye. Jane Hildebrand? Aye. And myself, Richard Gaganworth? Aye. So it's still unanimous that this would be passed. And um, we wish them luck and good weather to come up and do, do your work. All right, thank you. Um, Shane, before you go, yeah. um, we just need to ask you to state that you do agree that if any changes are going to be made from um, what you present in this application, that you'll come through the Old Kings Highway Office prior to proceeding with any changes. Yes, I will. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. Thanks. OK, bye. Bye. Good night. The next item is concerned with the demolition of a house at 80 Mayflower Terrace, that's in South Yarmouth. And 
Janet Gilmore is the owner and David Tobell is the agent. I believe David is tuned in here. Yes, David's in? Yes, I am. Uh, okay. David Duvall speaking, yes. Good. Did you have any, you know, we, we um, got the application and, and uh, quite a bit of detail is what the house looks like now. And there's quite a bit of commentary on the plot plan, which was recently drawn up um, by and Bob Perry, and and in there it talks about capping the septic system um, so that it's not open to the atmosphere while the construction is going on, de destruction. And so, in terms of um, most of the stuff, would be out in the front of the house, away from the water in the back. There are a few other items there that talked about um, wetlands and floodplains. So I'm not sure if this needs to be, <coughs> excuse me, approved by any of the other boards. I would suspect that we're one of the first. <coughs> um, uh, it's going through conservation in um, a couple of weeks. With, with Bob, you know, Bob Perry. Okay. Good. Do we have any abutters that want to speak on this? We do. I believe Tim Waits is here. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, everybody. Hi, Tim. Yeah, Can great. You just, just state your name and your address and your affiliation to the property. Sure. My name is uh, Tim Waits. I'm at 84 Mayflower Terrace. I'm the direct neighbor next door. And um, first, I, I, we're excited that some uh, movement will be happening on this property. It's a great opportunity to make an eyesore into something nice. <laughs> um, but my, uh, my concern with construction, I don't know if this is addressed to David, is that you know how close the, my lot line is to theirs. And they have that addition that was built on, it's less than three feet at one point to a uh, fence that I have up. And so I'm, I just wanted to know how, how that, uh, that it's not gonna be affected, that that fence won't be affected by it. And then, uh, so that's one question I had, Dave. Okay. The, um... The fence won't be affected by it. Uh, if we have to, or if we can, I know the owner would like to push it, you know, away from the fence further, but that will be up to the, uh, you know, to the town because I know it's close there. I know the owner would like to get it pushed over, but either way, we'll make absolutely sure. Uh, and I already talked to the excavator about it, that, um, you know, that uh, nothing will happen to the, um, to the fence. Dave, I had a question on that. In, in reading those specs that uh, was on the plot plan, it gave the impression that you'd be building almost a replication of the house in the sense that it would be on the exact same footprint. Yeah. Perhaps even using the same foundation. Yes, that is correct. It will be the exact same footprint. We don't plan on using the same foundation because it's really just not worth saving. So okay. in that respect, if we're allowed, we could push it away from the fence further as what right. the owner would actually like. Right. Where both sides are pre-existing non-conforming, they may approve of that. If they approve yeah. of it, I know the owner would like to do that, and that would be better for, uh, um, you know, for Tim also. So, um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, the total on one side is eleven, the other side is three, and so if they have seven seven feet, 
setback on each side, it would improve things a lot. Right, that would be a big help. And that's what we would try to do. If Good. we're allowed, we, we would want to do that. Good. Yeah. Any other comments or questions? Yeah, yeah, yeah David, with the, with the front of the house, um, with construction, getting vehicles in there, do you think you have enough room to do all that? There's that abandoned car that's in the front. <laughs> yes, well, I'm hoping to get everything out. Um, I've mentioned it quite a few times. So the car would definitely have to go. I've already mentioned a few times. The trailer definitely has to go. Um, so, you know, ideally I'd like everything to go, but I'll be satisfied to get the, everything in the front has to, has to go. It absolutely has to go because we can't do our work with it there. Right. And I've mentioned that several times. So I think they're just overwhelmed with, you know, the owners are overwhelmed. And um, so, but it will, it will be done. Yeah, no, I, I, I know, I know, the, I know, I know she's uh, an elderly, I know Janice is elderly um, and she lives with a daughter now and they've been displaced and it's a terrible story. Um, and I'm glad that they're okay. Um, but um, I mean, that is a concern of, um, are they going to empty out the house or is that already empty? Well, it's mostly already emptied. So we would just you know, I mean, we, we can go in and see if there's anything else there. And then we're just going to, you know, take it all down and put it in, in dumpsters and take yeah. everything out and all away. clean up the entire site. Yeah. Great. Yeah. In, any time frame on that? You know, when are you hoping to get it? Toward? Well, we're going to conservation in a couple of weeks and then um, we're going back to the historic, you know, for the elevations in a, in a few weeks also. And then, and, and then, then I, then I'd have to, you know, then uh, it would be the building department into the building department. So, yeah. you know, um, maybe at the end of May, we could start ish yeah. somewhere around there. Awesome. And, and David, on that, the side that the the fence abuts it, my understanding is that if it's three feet or less, and I'm not sure on this, then that wall would have to be considered a firewall and not have windows. Very interesting. I believe you're right. Um, I think it's a firewall, but I think the windows are okay. And by the way, she purposely did not want to have many windows on that side. She currently, on the new elevations, I can get you them, um, has two windows, you know, in that side. One's in the kitchen area, one's kind of in the dining area. That if if you so desire, she's pretty easy to work with. She, she could eliminate them. But I believe you're right about the fire code, but I, I don't believe that applies to the windows. It applies to the construction of the wall. I, I can look it up. Yeah, it's probably for a different meeting, I guess, but I just wanted to, to throw it out. Tim, if I might, Mr. <laughs> Chairman, if I may. Um, Tim, if you want me to, I can give David your contact information and he can contact you and you can have these discussions outside of, of a public hearing. Sure. If that's okay with you. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thanks, Beth. I will do that. You're very welcome. Thank you, Beth. You're welcome. Okay. Do we have a motion on this? Well, we might have questions? someone else in the audience. I'm not sure. There is someone out there, but I... We might want to ask, does anyone else in the audience have any questions that they, or comments that they may have? Please raise your hand or press star nine. Nope. No. Nope, so you're all set. Mr. Chairman, you can. I'll take a motion. I'll make a motion to accept the application as submitted. Ms. Jane Hildebrand, make a motion. I second it. By Rosemary Nichols, second. Okay, again, I will take a roll call. Bob Wilkins? Aye. Rosemary Nichols? Aye. Jane Hildebrand? Aye. And Richard Gagworth? Aye. Again, you know, it will be nice uh, to move this along. 
So that's good. Now, that's the only items that we have on the agenda for this evening. We have one which is continued and it will be continued again because um, the homeowners want to can have it um, reviewed at a meeting, non computerized. So, other than there are no minutes, I don't think, to vote on. We have a meeting coming up May 11th, again, Monday night at 7.15. And I'm not sure if that's going to be live in the conference room. Or I, yeah, I, I believe it's going to be another remote meeting. Yeah, as, as at this point in time, it's scheduled as a remote. Yeah. Yeah, I, I had hoped that, uh, I think Baker talked about May 4th at one point that things might ease up, but I haven't heard anything more recently. We haven't heard anything at Town Hall either. Yeah, good. Okay. Well, if we're finished, we can adjourn if someone wants to motion that. I'll move to adjourn. Second. So Bob Wilkins moves to adjourn and Jane seconded. it. All in favor? All right. You Aye. can raise your hands on the, on the adjourn. I'll take that. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Thank you. Thank you Stay all. Stay safe. Have a good